St. Jacques was carried from the pod, feeling the pull of gravity for the first time in months. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 craziest things you didn't know about living in space. So, just as if I started crying, my eye is full of tears. But you can see it just forms a ball on my eye. Sometimes I'll actually take my comb to help work it all the way to the ends. Everything floats. There is no up or down. For this list, we'll be going over some of the strange and lesser known facts about spending time in outer space. If you think we were out of our minds to leave out some out of this world facts, please share them with us in the comments. Number 10, cuisine. Most people have probably heard of Tang, but food eaten in space has come a long way since the early days. In the early Apollo days, NASA's space food team developed improvements in freeze drying technology. That same technology makes it possible for food to remain shelf stable at ambient temperatures for long periods of time while significantly reducing the weight of the food. Food taken into space used to be packaged in tubes to prevent spillage and for ease of consumption, but it's a lot more normal these days. Like most things, weight is a major consideration. Since it's more expensive to transport, the heavier it is. But the most important calculation is what things weigh. That's because it costs $10,000 for every pound blasted off to the astronauts. Nutritional value and the food shelf life are also important factors, as it needs to provide everything astronauts need to stay healthy for as long as it can. Often packaged in lightweight, specially sealed containers, space food comes in plenty of variety these days, particularly on the International Space Station, with hundreds of different dishes to choose from. Very good. Number nine, body proportions change. The human body isn't exactly made for being in space, so there are some side effects to spending a lot of time up there. To help with this, astronauts wear compression cuffs on their thighs to help keep the blood in their lower extremities. These effects can range from vision problems to muscle deterioration. Without gravity working on your body, your bones and muscles start to break down too. In fact, bone density drops by over 1% per month. But one of the most pronounced changes is the shape of the body itself. Without gravity pulling on it, the spine straightens out, adding to astronauts' heights. Blood flow also tends to move upward as well, giving space travelers a puffy face, a wider torso, and giving the legs a shrunken appearance. This extreme makeover space edition is just temporary, however. Number 8. Hygiene Problems Staying clean is tough enough on Earth, but space adds plenty of its own problems. Naturally, showers and baths are untenable in a zero-G environment. We can't take a normal shower because the water doesn't know where how to find the drain. So we don't have a regular shower. So astronauts are forced to use sponges to wash themselves. Special soaps and shampoos that don't require rinsing are also used to cut down on water. As far as soap is concerned, it comes up in, in pouches like this one. You need to add water and then you get a nice uh, liquid soap pouch which needs to last for about two weeks. And it's a no-rinse type of soap. It doesn't make a lot of foam, and it doesn't really need to be rinsed. Speaking of which, because surface tension keeps liquid close to the skin, they can make do with a small amount of water overall. And sometimes I'll actually take my comb to help work it all the way to the ends. They also have to be very careful when shaving or combing their hair, because loose hairs float freely and can be inhaled or get in people's eyes. Number seven, sleeping difficulties. You think getting a good night's sleep is tough? Try doing it in outer space. Trying to sleep in space would probably be a nightmare for insomniacs. It's so bad that they have to actually take bungee cords and strap them down to a wall to make them feel like they're laying on something because otherwise they constantly feel like they're falling, they can never get to sleep. For starters, the International Space Station rotates around the Earth multiple times per day, leading to each day being only around 90 minutes. This can play havoc on sleeping schedules. In addition, astronauts must be strapped in so they don't knock into anything while floating. Plus, the insides of the station are actually quite noisy, as all the machines produce sound, necessitating earplugs or sleeping pills to help put the astronauts out. The pills they're taking are reportedly prescribed to treat insomnia and anxiety, or even brain disorders and muscle tension. On the ground, users of these hypnotic drugs have experienced amnesia and anxiety, even behaviors like sleep driving. Although there are some benefits, such as a reduction in snoring, the journey to unconsciousness is an uphill one for many. Number six, space adaptation syndrome. Motion sickness is what happens when your brain can't reconcile the fact that we're immobile yet in motion on Earth. Everything floats. There is no up or down. 
And for 70% of first-time spacefarers, the initial couple of days in orbit means they will feel ill. Similarly, or rather opposingly, astronauts' brains have a difficult time adjusting to a lack of gravity and the strained sense of motion while in space. And we think that that motion sickness occurs because of a difference between what our eyes are seeing and what our inner ear, our vestibular system, is sensing. And that disconnect tells the brain that something weird is going on and gives you that sense of uh, nausea or, or motion sickness. Space adaptation syndrome occurs usually upon reaching space, with over half of space travelers experiencing illness, vomiting, and other discomfort as a result of the sudden change. Even the specialized training astronauts undergo to withstand nausea isn't enough to eliminate it completely. We're getting queasy just thinking about it. So yes, astronauts do occasionally get sick in space, but um, we have special uh, barf bags to deal with it. Number five, clothing. The most famous pieces of clothing astronauts wear are the spacesuits used for moving around in the vacuum. And getting the entire suit on requires a bit of help. Uh, there's many layers of this, so it makes it a little difficult to get in. These are incredibly cumbersome and difficult to put on, but offer protection from the conditions of space. Then there are the flight and entry suits donned by astronauts as they ascend or descend in a shuttle or re-entry pod. While aboard the spacecraft, however, most astronauts wear pretty typical clothing. And so uh, it's very rare that you either get really cold or really, really hot. And so, so it's a, pretty much a shirt sleeve environment as we, we refer to it on, on, on Earth. The main difference, though, is that they can't launder clothes due to the aforementioned water considerations. And water is very scarce in space. We also recycle our water and we only use it to drink or to wash. Still, with less physical exertion, they don't sweat as much, which means they can wear clothes for longer without changing. And when they do get too dirty, clothes are generally disposed of with other garbage. Number four, toilets. So everything in space seems more difficult than it is on Earth. I bet the bathroom's no different. It's no different. Curious minds, young and old, have often wondered, how do you go to the bathroom in space? It's actually one of the questions astronauts get the most, probably because, like the famed book says, everybody poops. Most of the toilets in space function using differential air pressure to dispose of waste. But you see it's pretty small, so you have to have pretty good aim, and you'll be, be, be ready to make sure things get let go the right direction. Liquids are sucked into a tube and eventually jettisoned into space. Solids, meanwhile, are retained on board until return to Earth. You take this red tab, you pull it off the rim, and depends on how full the container is. This one's about halfway through. We do have a, a stick, and you push it down in there with all its other friends. Sending poop hurtling through space at high speeds is apparently frowned upon. We certainly wouldn't want that to be our first contact with an alien world. Number three, the dangers of flatulence. No, we're not kidding. Farting can actually be hazardous in space. Farts may smell, but they quickly dissipate in the atmosphere. Not so in confined spaces like space stations, shuttles, or long car rides. Well, we are in kind of a closed environment, but fortunately, we have good filters that take care of things like that. In space, farts linger because there's nowhere for them to go. And while the odor might be bad, what's worse is the gases they're made of. Farts are flammable, and when their gas lingers in the air, the slightest spark could create an explosive situation. Silent but deadly indeed. Thankfully, with a controlled diet, astronauts can reduce the amount of certain gases they produce. That's one of the few smells you can smell strongly, but it's not exactly a spring garden. Number two, few deaths in space. At 11.40 a.m. this morning, space program experienced a national tragedy with the explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger approximately a minute and a half after launch from here at the Kennedy Space Center. For as much as the idea of dying in space has ingrained itself in pop culture, there have been relatively few deaths while in outer space. As of 2020, there have been 19 deaths related to spaceflight, 15 of them astronauts and four cosmonauts. So how is that possible? Well, with really good technology and understanding of space hazards. The basic necessities, food, water and air, are either replenished by resupply missions or recycled by the International Space Station's onboard facilities. Furthermore, most of these deaths have been either during takeoff or re-entry. That leaves only three deaths to happen while in space itself, or above 330,000 feet, which occurred on the Soyuz 11 mission in 1971. 
The three cosmonauts were killed after a vent valve defect caused them to asphyxiate in the cabin. The cause of the cosmonauts' death is a mystery. In the intervening moments between signing off on the radio and the recovering team's arrival, something has killed three people. While fringe theories abound about undocumented space travelers, these three are the only people confirmed to have died in space as of this writing. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Getting used to gravity again. People who've spent long durations in space often drop things. St. Jacques was carried from the pod, feeling the pull of gravity for the first time in months. Vents collect everything. Whatever isn't strapped down gets sucked into them. No alcohol. Not letting people get intoxicated around expensive equipment is a smart move. NASA has a pretty strict alcohol policy on the ISS and on the shuttle missions. Space is dangerous, so being less than sober could cause injury or death. You can't burp. Because gravity doesn't keep gases close to their mouths, astronauts can't belch. Basically, the, the gas and the liquid don't separate in the stomach uh, in the same way that they do on Earth due to the much lower gravity. So uh, it's much harder to come up with a full burp. There is no crying in baseball uh, space. Tears form, but they will not fall. So just as if I started crying, my eye is full of tears. But you can see it just forms a ball on my eye. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, space affects the brain. Cosmic radiation is some hair stuff, folks. Although Earth's magnetic field protects us and those in sufficiently close orbit, astronauts are still affected more than most. Being weightless challenges our internal navigation system. This can be a problem, for example, if we have to find the nearest escape hatch in an emergency. The radiation can affect cognitive functions in the brain over prolonged periods and can accelerate the onset of diseases like Alzheimer's. That could have uh, serious effects on your brain cells in your hippocampus and your prefrontal cortex. These are all areas uh, associated with memory, with um, decision making, and literally the particles appear to sort of break off pieces of the synapses and it has the consequences on behavior. While most astronauts' tours aren't long enough for it to be too extreme, planned missions to Mars and other solar bodies like asteroids could prove difficult, unless space agencies discover a way to better shield astronauts. Also, after long missions, scans showed an upward shift of the brain tissue against the top of the skull as well as a narrowing in the space for the spinal fluid. After all, we wouldn't want to send them all the way there if their brains aren't up for the tasks they have to perform when they get there. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.